So far, in physical science this year, we have talked about atoms a whole lot. In every single unit of topics that we've learned about so far, we just keep returning to this concept of atoms, atoms, atoms. And that's because atoms are just super important to understand because they make up everything in the entire universe that God made for us. Atoms are extremely important to understand. Not only do they make up all matter, but in the energy unit, we learned that almost every single type of energy requires matter in order to exist. And even the one type of energy that doesn't require atoms to exist, electromagnetic energy, it still interacts with atoms as it is emitted by atoms and absorbed by them. So atoms are obviously a really important topic to understand in order for scientists to understand the universe around them. But so far in physical science, we've made a huge simplification whenever we've looked at atoms. We have pictured atoms as these solid, uniform, faceless spheres, as if they were just made up of the same thing all the way through. And that's simply not the case. Atoms are made up of smaller pieces. And we're going to look at the three fundamental pieces, protons, neutrons, and electrons, that make up atoms. Now, it's worth mentioning, right now, scientists in physics and chemistry are trying to figure out even smaller pieces that protons, neutrons, and electrons are made up of. We're not going to worry about any of that right now. For now, we're just going to focus on those three main pieces that make up every single atom. In this lesson, we're going to look at, in particular, where those pieces are located in an atom. As we study the structure of atoms and no longer have to think of atoms as just solid, uniform spheres. Now, in order to get started understanding the structure of atoms, it's probably a good place to start to review exactly what an atom is. And the definition of an atom is that it is the smallest fundamental building block of matter. It's the smallest unit that makes up all matter. An atom is the smallest piece of an element that is still that element. So for example, if you have a chunk of carbon and you keep splitting it in half into smaller and smaller pieces, eventually you're going to get to a single atom of carbon. And if you try to split that atom of carbon, which is really, really hard to do. It's not like a chemical change where you can just change the bonds. You're actually splitting the nucleus of that atom. If you were to split carbon into a smaller piece, it wouldn't be carbon anymore. You would be changing it to a different type of atom altogether. So atoms are really important to understand because they are the most basic thing that makes up everything in the world around us. But now, we're going to learn in this unit that atoms actually have smaller pieces. Atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Three tiny pieces that come together and structure themselves in a specific way to make up every single atom. It's an understanding where these pieces are located and what they do that you can really understand why atoms have the properties that they have. So, here I'm going to bring in two atoms, and these are really important atoms. The one on the left is oxygen, and the one on the right is carbon. Oxygen and carbon are the two atoms that are the most common, the most abundant in living things on Earth. By mass, we find these atoms more than any other atom, even though living things contain a whole lot of different atoms. Now, we're not just satisfied to look at these atoms, though, as uniform spheres anymore. Let's peel away the layers and see what's inside as we learn that the parts of an atom are arranged into different pieces. So as I take the outer layer off of these atoms, you can see that there's this intersection made up of protons, which are red, and neutrons, which are yellow, and they're kind of packed together in this dense ball at the center of an atom. That section of an atom, the dense ball at the center, is known as the nucleus. Nucleus is just another word for center. So we've got this central section that has most of the mass of an atom because it has all the protons and neutrons, which are the most massive parts of an atom. And then surrounding that nucleus, we have the rest of the pieces of the atoms, the electrons, which are moving around in 
certain locations within an electron cloud. Unlike the dense center of an atom, the electrons are really spread out and the electrons don't really have that much mass to begin with. They're much, much smaller than a proton or a neutron. These are the basics of what every single atom is made up of. And it's worth it to note that the way the protons, neutrons, and electrons of any given atom are arranged gives atoms their characteristic properties. The way the protons, neutrons, and electrons are arranged is the reason why metals are all shiny and malleable. You can pound them into flat sheets and why they conduct electricity and heat. The way the protons, neutrons, and electrons are arranged are the reason why atoms on the way right side of the periodic table are mostly gases at room temperature and why some of them are extremely toxic to living things. The way the protons, neutrons, and electrons are arranged are the reason why mercury is a liquid at room temperature, why tungsten has an extremely ridiculously high melting point so it's really hard to turn it to a liquid and why helium is ridiculously hard to turn into a liquid, why the particles don't want to come together and slide past one another. Understanding protons, neutrons, and electrons is a key to understanding why matter behaves the way that it does because we can understand why atoms interact with each other the way that they do. In the lessons following this lesson, you're going to learn more about the properties of what protons are like, what neutrons are like, and what electrons are like. For now, understand that the protons and neutrons are found in a dense nucleus at the center of an atom, whereas the electrons are floating around somewhere in an electron cloud that's not very dense around the outside of the atom.